IABCA Young Community Achiever of the Year. This award recognizes community achievement of an individual who has shown strong community leadership and brought about a positive change and is under 35 years of age. I would now like to welcome on stage the Honorable Julian Lisa MP, Chair, Parliamentary Friends of India and Federal Member for Baroa, representing the Honorable Scott Morrison MP, Prime Minister of Australia, to say a few words and assist in the presentation of our first award. Namaste. Mira nam Julian He, mi barara lok sabha shetrika sansad hu, mi parliamentary friends of India kadyakshpi hu. Me ayabka ko danivad denachata hun, o sonya gandhi ko denivad denachata hun. Um, it is an honour and a privilege to be with you here this evening and to chair the parliamentary friends uh, of India and represent the Prime Minister. I represent a constituency with 6,300 Indian Australians and I wish I had more. It's wonderful to welcome you to the IAB Kagala dinner and it's particularly wonderful to welcome our wonderful new High Commissioner from India, uh, Manpreet Vora here. Uh, welcome, sir, to you and to all the award winners and the nominees. Tonight is really about you. Uh, can I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay respects to elders past and present? As well as the High Commissioner, can I acknowledge the Consul General, my parliamentary colleagues, Your Excellencies, Mayors, Councillors, community and business leaders, distinguished guests, supporters of IAPCA, and mostly, most importantly, the Indian Australian Business and Community Award nominees. There is one person that I would like to say a particular word about this evening, and that is a woman who, when I first met her, had a business card that I think said Chief Amazement Officer. <laughs> Her name, of course, is Sonia Gandhi. She's the founder of IABCA. And Sonia, you are amazing. Tonight is amazing. And the people that you have attracted and acknowledging through these awards are truly amazing. Thank you for all you do. Like other speakers tonight, I want to acknowledge that we are meeting um, against a terrible backdrop of the COVID situation in India. I want to say something celebratory shortly because we are here to celebrate, but I do want to say something about the COVID situation. All of us have been deeply affected by the toll COVID is taking on India. India has been so generous and led the world with relation to the export of vaccines, 66 million globally. And as a true friend of India, Australia is repaying that generosity. On Wednesday, a chartered flight left Australia carrying essential medical supplies. 1,056 ventilators and 43 oxygen concentrators. I'm pleased to say another flight packed with medical supplies and equipment left Sydney earlier today. This flight was carrying another 1,056 ventilators, 60 oxygen concentrators and essential medical supplies. Some 15 tonnes of medical supplies from Australia have gone to India. And my message from... Thank you. I think we should give that a clap. My message is that Australia will stand by India however long this crisis lasts. On a happier note, an hour after this function concludes, at midnight tonight, the temporary pause on flights from India to Australia ends. And facilitated flights by the Australian Government will resume. The plane that was used today to take the medical supplies to India will then act as the first Government facilitated flight for Australians to return home from India focusing on the most vulnerable Australians, and this will be the first of several flights. Since COVID-19 hit, the government has helped nearly 20,000 Australians return from India, including on 38 government-facilitated flights. And Tuesday night's budget provides another $176.3 million for more facilitated flights to get more Australians home. The pause has worked. It was first and foremost about us and our quarantine system. The pause gave us time to minimise the risk of COVID getting out and into the community and having a third wave here. Active cases of COVID-19 in our hotel quarantine have dropped by over 40% in the past few weeks. In the Northern Territory, where those first flights will return, cases dropped from 53 to 4. Our quarantine measures are about keeping Australians safe and assuring that, ensuring that we can continue to live in this way that we are in Australia tonight. And it's, it's hard to think of any other place on the planet 
where you could gather a thousand people in a room for a dinner of this sort tonight. But that is uh, the success of what, what has happened here in Australia. I want to share some words from the Prime Minister. He says, and I quote, I know many in the community have grave concerns for friends and family in India. This is an unfolding tragedy and Australia is standing with its dear friend. In a global pandemic, there's nothing to celebrate. The loss is so great. But there are achievements to acknowledge. In Australia, business and community groups have worked like never before to keep staff in jobs, to stay open and to provide services and support. I welcome our strengthening partnership with India. The comprehensive strategic partnership is a big step, realising more of the enormous potential of our friendship. It will result in even more cooperation across trade, investment, defence and science, cyber and critical technology. It confirms our enduring friendship, matri or mateship, working side by side, trusting each other, sharing a sense of mission and purpose. It promises a brighter future once the pandemic subsides and we can all meet again. The finalists and winners of these awards are magnificent representatives of Australia's Indian community. And that's a message from the Prime Minister. Let me conclude on an optimistic note, because we're all talking about COVID, but we should remember we are here tonight to celebrate success and achievement. The PM is right about the magnificent Indian Australian community. And I have to tell you, I've been looking forward to this event for some years, and Sonia, I'm so pleased it's here in Sydney, and thanks to the New South Wales Government for bringing it here. In 2019, I had the privilege of hosting a roundtable in Parliament House and meeting some of the award winners from that year. And I have to tell you, the IAPCA award winners are sensational people, along with many of the supporters of IAPCA as well. Um, truly, we are seeing among Australia's best and brightest this evening and acknowledging the efforts of some extraordinary people. Not just people who are succeeding in business, but people who are creating stronger links in our community. We know there are around 700,000 Australians of Indian origin. And as Peter Varghese has observed, those people-to-people -people links uh, which the diaspora bring are absolutely vital to our relationships. Community and business relationships are indeed the bridge on which the strengthening of the country-to-country -country relationship is ultimately built. And that's what tonight's awards celebrate. Many of the awards will go to people who've made a significant mark and contribution. The two th threads, both business and community, woven together, are the essential underpinnings of our relationship. Tonight is a night to celebrate success. Tonight is a night to celebrate all that is good. Bahut vadai danivad. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Julian, would you like to announce the winner? The winner of the IABCA Young Community Achiever Award for this year is Elvis Martin from the City of Melbourne. Congratulations. Thank you. Come up, please. Accept your award and then have a walk down the catwalk. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Have a, a walk. Anybody who can wear gorgeous gold shoes like that is an award winner in my books. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you once again, Elvis, on your extraordinary accomplishment. And we'd also like to thank the Honourable Julian Leeser MP for his commitment to Australia-India relationship and for being here this evening on a Friday night. Thank you, and please... Um... <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank you, Ayabka, for this honour, and I'm really humbled. <clears throat> and uh, I want to th thank people who nominated me, uh, who thought uh, doing a charity work and advocating for disadvantaged community will land me here. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> so I have been advocating for people and I drive, my lived experience drives me to do the work that I do. And um, I want to acknowledge all the nominees. 
You do a great work. That's why you all have been nominated. And congratulations on your work. And it's uh, something else I would like to mention. It's a real honor to know that I'm the first LGBTI winner of this award. So it shows that it shows that how our culture is changing towards positive progression. And thank you so much.